well, I don't know how to break this to you, but you're not getting any younger. I don't know whoever invented that term, but it's kind of a weird comment. Uh, of course, we all know we're all aging, but how can we extend our life? In fact, that's one of my goals is to help people live longer and definitely a more quality of life. Now, is there a really good test to determine how long you're going to live? Can you really tell by how many wrinkles a person has? I mean, the person who has the record for longevity is they live to 122 years. That's a pretty long time. Uh, there probably were people that lived longer than that, but it wasn't really well documented. I remember in practice, uh, I would do a lot of um, seminars outside my office in different governmental agencies. And uh, one lady uh, wanted me to come to where she was living in an assisted living uh, home. And they had, um, you know, different age ranges from, I guess, 60 uh, up to maybe 90. And I remember when I was in the room giving this presentation, I asked the age of everyone in that room. And I was shocked to find out there were people living there in their 60s that were literally in wheelchairs, like 63, 65 years old. I was like, wow, incredible. I'm going on 58 years old. And I'm actually a grandfather, which is just like a bizarre concept, because I don't look at myself as being old. I mean, I remember being young and looking at my grandparents when they were in 50s thinking, wow, they're so old. So anyway, I think your 60s are the new 40s. Okay, that's just my viewpoint. But you can't really tell how long someone's going to live based on the wrinkles that they have or how gray their hair is or how much they lost their hearing or how much they lost their sight or if they lost their cognitive function. Some people that have dementia could live for a very long time. Now, calcification is a good predictor of mortality if you have calcification in your arteries. But as people age, they become calcified. Their joints become calcified. Their, their tissues become stiff. That's calcium building up. Also, as we age, we get shorter. We lose height. Our spine starts to shrink. All right, next one is bone loss, which relates to being shorter. And also, um, as we age, we tend to fall more than we should. But there's another indication for longevity that I want to talk about, and that is loss of muscle, both in muscle mass and strength. As we age, we lose our muscle. And that is a very strong association between loss of muscle strength and your mortality of aging, not necessarily the mass of the muscle, how big the muscle is, but the strength of your muscle. Because as we age, we get atrophy, right? We have a loss of muscle. And the term for that is called sarcopenia. And the number one muscle that's affected first is the anterior thigh, the quadricep, okay? This is why you see, especially after menopause and more in women because they have more estrogen, you'll see a lot of weakness in that quadricep muscle. You'll see, it looks like cellulite, but it's really atrophy, which is a combination of fat, but there's a lot of muscle loss as well. So one test they use to determine sarcopenia, other than a CAT scan or MRI, which is the gold standard, is a sit to stand time test or a chair stand test, CST test. So this test right here can indirectly give you a clue on kind of how much sarcopenia you have. And indirectly, that can be related to how long you live. Of course, there's other factors, but this can be a really good clue. So I want to do an experiment right now. Okay, I want you just to stand up right now. If you're sitting, just stand up. Of course, you're probably not standing up watching your computer, but stand up unless you're on your cell phone and comment down below if there's difficulty in standing up. Does it take you a long time? Can you stand up very fast? You know, probably even a better test would be to sit on the floor and get up in a standing position. If you have sarcopenia, boy, you're going to have to roll over and rock up and you're going to have to push yourself up. It's going to take a long time to get up versus jumping up quickly, which means you can rule out this condition really fast. There's another really good test. Okay. There's, so there's two tests I'm going to recommend. One is a hand grip strength test. Okay. You can use one of those grip strength devices. And if you're a male and cannot grip strength, 66 pounds or 30 kilograms of grip strength, then potentially there's a problem and you could have this condition. 
And if you're female, it would be 44 pounds or 20 kilograms of grip strength. So these are two really good uh, home tests to just to see where you're at on the scale of things. Now, let's just talk about what we can do for longevity. Okay, what can we do to increase um, our length of life and make sure it's quality? And also, what can we do for sarcopenia? A lot of people have this condition. One of the biggest symptoms of a low vitamin D deficiency is muscle weakness, okay? So vitamin D is essential for making sure that your muscles stay strong, especially if you have sarcopenia. So the first thing that I would highly recommend is start taking vitamin D for your muscle strength. It just so happens vitamin D is also associated with longevity because vitamin D is intimately involved with your immune system, with inflammation. Uh, it's, it has anti-cancer properties. It's great for the heart. It's good for autoimmune diseases. It's involved with so many different things. There's actually, uh, I think, 19,000 genes that it can affect. So vitamin D is slightly important. Okay, number two, resistance training. Very, very important. If you can maintain a routine exercise program, okay, where you're doing resistance type exercise, that would be very therapeutic to your longevity versus not doing exercise or doing it inconsistently. Now, I like to switch up my exercises. I'll do all sorts of different exercises. Like um, I'm still doing my sled up a hill backwards. I'm pulling. I did a video with a guy by the name of Ben Patrick, which is the knees over toes guy. Uh, it's, it was a really good interview, which involves walking backwards and pulling things backwards. So I'm still doing that exercise, but lately I'm also doing Pilates. I really like Pilates, works the whole body. And a new type of exercise, which is actually quite fascinating. It's, it's a little different. It's called gyrotonics. Um, I'll put a link down below, but it's a fascinating uh, exercise program that involves strengthening motions, okay? And like a 3D, not like a flexion extension type exercise, but you're exercising your entire body in different ranges of motion. So you'll have to just see it to understand it. You have to go to a gym that has these um, machines. It's pretty awesome. All right, number three, this is very important, not just for sarcopenia, but for longevity, nutrient-dense foods. I'll just give you one little example. Let's say, for example, you are deficient in folic acid, okay, or folate, right? Well, that alone can create the same damage as radiation, okay, to your DNA. So in other words, if you're deficient in folate, your DNA uh, become damaged and they can't repair but that alone will shorten your life. There's some fascinating research. That's just one nutrient. Okay, number four, fasting. <laughs> this will extend your life, definitely. But let's say, for example, you're getting older and you have sarcopenia and uh, maybe you just do one meal a day, right? Because you might not be in a situation where you can fast five days, especially if your muscles are weak. Um, not a good idea. But one meal a day, very smart. But fasting increases growth hormone. It increases autophagy, which is the recycling of old damaged proteins. It'll definitely increase your life. Okay, number five, keep your cortisol low. Cortisol is very destructive on your muscles, okay? Especially your legs and your butt muscle. Um, if you haven't seen that video, I'll put that video down below. But cortisol is necessary in normal amounts, but not in high amounts. If you have too much cortisol, Boy, that will just really paralyze your immune system and shorten your life. Number six, and I think from my own viewpoint, this is should be number one, okay? State of mind. They've, they've done research on this. Having a life that has meaning is very vital for your longevity, your rural happiness. And unfortunately, it's not the majority. There's not a lot of people that are doing what they really want to do. But I would venture to say that state of mind is the number one factor for longevity. All right, number seven, adequate and quality protein. If we're dealing with sarcopenia, we're dealing with having the raw material to replace all your proteins, not just muscle, but all the biochemical pathways. Um, we need adequate protein and we definitely need quality protein. Eggs are at the top of the list, okay? And then if we just talk about sarcopenia itself, there's a version of an amino acid called leucine called HMB. 
It's kind of a metabolite of leucine that can help correct sarcopenia. I just wanted to add this to the mix because if someone has sarcopenia, this is a good remedy. And there's a lot to learn about longevity. And so I think your next most important video to watch would be on this topic right here. Check it out.